In previous videos we talked about the concept of render blocks and what they are. We covered installation, packing, naming and exporting. And by now you should be familiar with all those operations. And that should be enough for the most of the use cases. But if you want to dive even deeper, there are some settings which you can change to optimize your workflow even more. So let's go through render blocks settings. We can also export to render queue. Let's say we want to export test push. So you can do something like this, render, close this, render, close this, render. And this allows you to do the stuff in multiple projects. So let's say you have these in your other project and you want other SFX rendered from here. Let's say render. And now we have all of these in render queue and we can hit render all. And now everything is going to be rendered from multiple projects or render blocks. We can change the name scheme to be like this. Hello there, my viewers. So we have no underscores and all uppercase letters. So let's see now. Hello there, my viewers. And we have this kind of naming scheme. And we can also use none. This is going to stay the same. So if you want to do it manually, you can do it manually. Then we have post export window and it's this window over here. So right now it is being shown, but you can hide it after the render is done. And this is to follow the default render settings. So, so if it's being shown here, we can set it to be shown here after the render blocks are completed. And there are two ways of behavior of label items. One is to resize labels just when they're expanded. So if you have a situation like this, this will stay the same, but if you expand it, they will be expanded. And if you select here always, then this will happen. And this is when you're creating them manually by using pack action. You can set stretch notes. So this is regarding the label items. You can set no. And then if you name them, let's say long sum, long name. So you can see now that the text is not being stretched. It's smaller, but can be readable in more situations because when you do something like this, it is being stretched. Uh, let's go over to other settings over here. What we have overwriting the default is ask. So if you have explosion and you render those and you try to render it again, it will ask them by default if you want to overwrite it. But if you don't want to do that, because if you're overwriting in layers, you will have to do it for each layer and it's painful and not necessary so you can select always and it will always overwrite existing files and over here we have option to choose that we don't want to color those so let's see we have a situation like this where we have all tracks in different color and blocks will not have custom colors so you can do that if you want but if you want to color them you can choose two different schemes so SVS is just the one you're using your SVS custom color, SVS color management, custom color. So this will use these colors or you can have default. This is some predefined colors for render blocks, whatever you prefer. And over here we have a GUI. We can change the highlight color of the GUI itself. And it also changes for the naming editor. Uh, you can also set where the settings GUI is appearing. So if you have a shortcut over here, you can set it to appear next to your shortcut. This is a custom icon that you will get with the pack. And But I just use it in the center of the screen again. Okay, this is all for now. I hope these video tutorials were clear and informative. I will do my best to continue making updates and fixes to render blocks. And if there is still anything unclear, 
feel free to contact me directly. I hope you will find this workflow useful and thank you for watching and see you soon.